Hello everyone, and thank you for joining us. Today we are talking about shadows. It's a massive topic to cover, but there are a few fundamentals everyone should know. We will start with the theory and then move on to some more practical examples in 3D. This is a long but extremely valuable lesson, so let's jump in and see what it's all about. Okay, so today we are talking about shadows. And boy, shadows is a massive topic to cover, but I wanted to go over it because it's just, it's so instrumental um, to what we do in our daily uh, careers and our artwork, uh, but just in life too, you know, it's something we all know and it's something that we all understand, um, but we might not really think about it that much. And I think sometimes it's important to take a step back and just actually think about these shadows, how they're happening, why they're happening, and most importantly, how can we use that to our advantage, uh, whether it be through storytelling or um, through uh, composition or just how to just recreate it, right? Like if, if somebody wants a certain look and they want us to recreate it, you know, how can we do it technically? Um, so today is going to be split up into two separate parts. Uh, the first part is going to be me talking a little bit about shadow theory without getting technical um more about just like how we can use them to our advantage and um why certain things are the way they are uh, and then the second part is going to be actually in practice right so going into uh, cinema 4d or whatever program you're using it, it really doesn't matter um it's more of a conceptual level and just kind of like looking at um light placements and light qualities and how they affect um yeah the shadows uh, so without further ado, let's jump in and uh, let's start part one. Okay, so how are they created? How are these shadows created? Well, it's it's a little elementary, but uh, simply put, it's just the obstruction of light rays. So everywhere in the world, we have light rays that are that are bouncing in every which direction. And if those light rays get obstructed by an object, well, then a shadow is created. Um, so yeah, simply put, it's just basically... Uh, something moving in front of light rays and those light rays have to uh, go around it and therefore there is a negative space that's created hence the shadow um, now what does that do though what does that do so what it does is shadows create shape right so without shadows we don't have much shape in the world if any um, shadows are what give us contour they give us they give life to the world right visual life at least you know if we didn't have shadows we wouldn't have a visual comprehension of what the world looked like everything would just be flat um you know this this man he would be i don't even know what he would be it's it's hard for my brain to even compute because i'm so uh used to shadows <laughs> you know what i mean um and it's like this would just be this would just be a wash of color it wouldn't have any definition to it i wouldn't understand it um, I wouldn't even understand that these were steps here uh, if we didn't have shadows. So, so what they do for us is they create definition and shape in the world. And they can do that in our artwork too, right? So if you're thinking of it from an artwork standpoint, you know, or even an advertising standpoint, you know, if, you, if you're doing, uh, let's say you're selling this bike or selling a car or whatever, and you want to accentuate certain parts of that, well, you can do that by crafting out your, your lights to cast the shadows that are going to work to your advantage to actually get that look you want and get the contours that you want and be able to feature the parts of the object that you want, right? If I want to feature the front of this man's face, well, then I'm going to have the shadows drop off to the back, right? Um, same with the, you know, the chest area and everything. So what they do is they, they create shape for us in the world, not only in the world, but in our artwork, right? And that's something important to remember um, to use to our advantage, you know, use that shape to tell your story. Okay, so which leads us to the next slide, right? So um, as visual artists, we're always trying to tell a story. If if it's through a single image or through moving picture, whatever it is, we're trying to say something visually. And shadows can help us do that, right? So shadows help inform the viewer about the world that they are looking at. Even if it's not an actual literal world, it helps tell them about um, the image and what's happening there and what kind of emotions they should be feeling, just like in the real world. Um, so for instance, um, it can inform the viewer without being so literal of what kind of environment you're in, right? So here, you know, I, I don't know what I'm looking at other than it's, it's a wall with an interesting image of uh, 
a window, excuse me, an interesting window. Um, but I, I do have an understanding that it feels somewhat tropical, right? I, this feels like maybe it's in Mexico or something or Puerto Rico or something. It's some, somewhere kind of tropical. Um, so I kind of get that vibe. You know, here it's given me an understanding of time, right? Like I have no idea where this is. I have no idea what this is. But what I do understand is that it's early in the morning for a lot of reasons, but in particular because we have long shadows that are happening and just instinct instinctively as humans, we understand that. It can also work to our advantage with characters, right? With people, with human emotions and how we're supposed to feel about um, certain objects or certain characters, if you will, in your image, right? So a lot of times if you have softer shadows uh, that are not as harsh and they're not as dark, you have a more approachable image, you have a more approachable person or you have a more approachable product, I guess you could say, um, whatever your your hero object is. Um, and that's that's kind of what's happening here. You know, we have we have soft shadows that are happening. Um, yes, it's being directionally lit, but it's also just falling off nice and sharp. So this is a very approachable image, whereas here we have an image where it's like super dark and mysterious. I can't see his face. Um, granted, these shadows actually are pretty soft, but they're doing, they're being uh, positioned in a way that they're creating mystery, right? They're, they're, they're making us feel a certain emotion about this person um, that is completely different than this person over here. So we can really use shadows to, to give us an advantage on how the viewer should feel too, right? Or just give them some clues about uh, what the world is like and how, you know, what, yeah, what their emotions are, what story you want to tell. You can use them to your advantage for that. So yeah, that brings us to emotions, right? So it's kind of touching on what I had before, but um, again, we're all we're always trying to create emotions. Uh, life is just one big ball of emotions, and uh, especially as an artist, I think we are exceptionally emotional, and we want to get those on the paper or picture, or whatever it is. And uh, once again, lighting is key, man. Lighting is super key, and uh, shadows are um, a key part of that, right? So uh, I'm kind of going from like soft to uh, hard here. So like, and these are just. These aren't like hard set rules, but these I feel like as humans, you just, this is kind of how you react naturally. And this is what I think that the world is determined, uh, makes something uh, the way it is or how you're supposed to feel. Now that's not to say that rules can't be broken, but uh, yeah, it's for the sake of it, we'll go with this. So uh, once again, you know, like beauty products and stuff, if you're doing a beauty shoot, a lot of times you're gonna want softer shadows, more airier, you know, these shadows here are pretty, pretty soft. They're pretty transparent. They're not super harsh. And you almost can't even see them. You can just feel them, you know? All I'm thinking about is this product and it feels nice and open. Uh, same with this portrait here, you know? I don't know if this is a beauty shot or whatnot, but this this woman feels approachable to me. She doesn't feel like she's threatening, right? Like the 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 way that it's it's lit and the way that the, the, the shadows are casting, to me, this feels like an approachable person. Um, now, moving down the line, as we start to get darker shadows and harsher shadows, we start to convey some more deep emotions, right? Like for me, this is a little bit more of a deeper emotion. This is obviously not, not to mention his facial expressions are pretty emotional, granted, but his, his lighting is also way more emotional, right? It matches his expressions. It matches how this man seems to be feeling. He, he seems to be feeling like he has some sort of stress in his life. And, uh, because of that, we have, you know, we have harsher shadows that are much darker. I mean, imagine this man with this face and this lighting. It might feel a little cheesy, to be honest. It might be like, whoa, he's overacting or something. So, um, you know, this lighting is complementing the emotions that are happening in this scene. You know, same here. Like, I don't know what's happening here in this scene, but I know what emotions it's making me feel. It's making me feel uncomfortable, right? Um, it's making me feel like there's a mysterious character that's trying to get me or trying to get someone and he's coming through the window. Um, that's how this image is making me feel. And that's, I, I see hardly anything and I get those emotions just from this. Um, and yeah, same with this. It's very ominous. You know, we have the long shadows that are happening here and traditionally uh, long shadows are also ominous, right? It's something that is like, uh, makes you feel uncomfortable. And again, these aren't hard set rules, but it's just the emotions that I feel like most of us get, right? I can't see his face. I can't see anything about him, but he's like this giant almost that's coming to get me. 
is the emotions I feel. And, you know, consistently we have darker shadows that have much harder edges. So the takeaway from this is just be thinking about what your shadows are doing for you and what your light quality is like and how that might affect the emotions of your audience. Okay. You know, what are you trying to say with your lighting and, and your shadow uh, qualities? Okay, so moving on, um, this is kind of just getting into like a little bit more practical real world examples of our shadow qualities, right? So once again, moving from um, soft shadows and lighter colors to hard uh, shadows and darker colors, if you want something to feel, you know, more open and airy and lighter, um, you're going to go for the soft and light look, uh, most likely. Um, beauty work traditionally is not going to be harsh shadows because harsh shadows just don't usually make people look that nice um, when you see someone that's that has really harsh shadows on them for beauty photography at least it's usually not the way that you go you want them to feel soft and light and airy and beautiful um, now moving down the line you know as we start to introduce more you know um, harder shadow detail we start to it's kind of almost like intriguing, right? It's almost like you're playing with the shadows. They're not quite too dark. They're kind of transparent, but they have some to them. They have, they're not just straight lines. They have like interest to them. So they're creating some sort of interest with this man's face that's making me want to look at it and go deeper into this image to discover it. Um, now in the extreme examples, or I guess you could even call this just a real world example, right? So when can these dark harsh shadows be to your advantage and not be scary, <laughs> right? Because every example we've shown so far has been like super scary and like ominous and like psychopath, whatever. Um, well, it's a lot of times when you want to show detail. So let's say, for instance, you're a bodybuilder and you have crazy muscles, you have the six pack, all that stuff. You're going to want to show that off. And if you have shadows that are softer they're not going to do as well of a job of doing that right like shadows that are harder um, and shorter are going to make them feel like it's yeah you're going to get more definition from it so the the so the harder the shadows um, the more definition you're going to pull out of this image right because if you were to put this type of lighting on this man he wouldn't look even crazy he wouldn't look even close as buff as he does here so you can really carve out detail where you want just based on the shadow types that you have and the light positioning all right which brings us to the next thing uh light direction right so what are you trying to say where are you trying to get people to look at this all has to do with of course your light but also where's the light falling off you know where do i want this viewer to actually put their eyes Obviously, I'm not going to be looking over here because it's falling fully off into shadow. My, me as a viewer, I'm going straight here. Um, so your light direction can really tell the viewer where you want them to look and really highlight what's important. And the shadow fall off will help their eyes go to that correct place, right? So like if you're to look at this, this is almost like asking your eyes to go up, right? Because we have dark 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 starting to get lighter 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 ultimately all the focus is here right so it's like the person that took this photograph knew that and they knew that they wanted you to essentially be looking back in this lady's eyes because she has yeah she's she's fierce right <laughs> she's a model um anyways you get it uh and also you know it's interesting too because we're creating these shadows are they're not super dark, but they are at the same time. So there's there's some interesting light play fall off that's still making it approachable, but like strong at the same time. Um, and this one, I believe I had earlier, but yeah, it's uh, once again, we're creating mystery with this man. You know, he is um, he's going through some things, but where this light direction is actually hitting him, it's just telling us a little bit about it. You know, it's top lit. And it's just, it's creating strong shadows that are just telling us a little bit about them, enough to invoke our intrigue. All right, so moving on. So light source and position, right? So we have all these different looks in the world. We have all these different ways that light can fall off and shadows can fall off. But are there any like hard, fast, steady rules um, that can help us achieve these looks? And the short answer is yes, uh, but there's also a lot of variables that go into them. Uh, the first variable is what type of light do you have? And the second variable is where is it positioned? And the third is what's the size of it? 
So to break it down as simple as I could, I want to just kind of like get an overarching uh, yeah, overview of, of what the hard fast rules are. So simply put, a large light source is going to produce softer shadows, right? So the bigger your light source, the softer the shadows are. Okay, the smaller the light source, the harder the shadows. So think about it this way. So if you have a flashlight, that's that's a super small light source um, that's gonna produce harder shadows. Now the caveat to this is is distance. Okay, so the best way I can describe this is think of it as a sun. So the further the light, the sharper the shadows. So the sun is huge, which kind of breaks this rule right here, which is like, oh, a big light source should have soft shadows. Well, that's true, but it's also relative to distance. So the sun is, I don't know how far away, it's far away. And because of that, it creates soft shadows because it is so far away, even though it's a massive light source, these shadows appear small because it's so far away. So even if you have a large light source, if it's super far away, it's still going to create sharper shadows. Okay. Um, and then there's also the position, right? So where is my light located? And again, I think this is pretty instinctual for all of us, but the lower the position of the light, the longer the shadows are going to be, right? So I know that this light is coming from this direction, right? It's, it's, it's going towards these people and it's obviously pretty low. And why is that happening? It's because it's actually blocking more real estate, I guess you could say. The, the light source is hitting more of this man than it would be if it was at a higher position. So at a higher position, it's going to create shorter shadows, right? So the shadows aren't going to be as long when they're above. Um, and in part two, I'm going to actually put this in the practice. So if it doesn't make perfect sense right now, I'll show you like more in detail in, in part two. All right. And I think this is the last slide, but, uh, yeah, we can use it to create texture, right? So we can use it to make our scenes more visually interesting, right? We can use it to actually create patterns and create texture and just bring life to a scene. Um, you know, I don't even know what this is, but it's pretty cool. It almost feels like kind of futuristic here. I feel, I feel good because there's, I see flowers that are happening here, of course here, but they're also on this nice book and this cup of tea. So it's, this is giving me a warm and inviting feeling. And this is giving me kind of like a, I don't know, like an artsy feeling throughout here. So we can also use it as, you know, not only to tell story, but just to, to create an additional visual interest through texture. Okay, so that's going to do it for part one. Uh, now in part two, I'm going to actually be going into uh, Cinema 4D and be putting some of this to practice. So let's do it. All right, so let's take some of the theory that we learned in part one and let's bring it into a 3D package and let's just try to apply that and just see how the theory works in practice. Now, um, I'm using Cinema 4D, but whatever your package of choice is, whether it's Blender, Maya, 3ds max what have you um, it's all the same on a conceptual level so don't be off put by this if this isn't your package of choice this is more about a conceptual level of just how these lights work and they work the same in all packages and all renderers um, so for today we're going to be using um, an area light now if you remember me saying uh, in the part one of the lesson um, that each light is going to produce different results with shadows. Now, with an area light, I'm able to show you um, a wider range of a type of shadows that we can actually have. So for today, we're going to use an area light. And then in a future lesson, we'll test out the other lights and we will um, we'll see how those react differently. Um, so what I have here is I have a couple different views set up. So I just have a view of the scene, so we're able to see what's going on. But I also have a view of the light, because I want you to see this is this is what the light itself, the area light, is actually seeing, right? This is this is if the area light were a camera. Because I want you to get a, a grasp of just how far this is from it. Um, also, I have a top view set up, and this top view is so we can actually see what's happening with these shadows as we move this light around. All right, so right now I have an area light that I would consider to be a large area light in, in, in reference um, to the statue, right? Um, and what's happening is, if you remember in part one, the larger the light and the closer it is, the more shadows um, it's going to fill in, right? The less shadows, I guess you could say, you're going to see. Now, don't don't look at this part here. Look at the render over here because the way it's portraying it here is, is not accurate inside just a viewport. We want to be looking over here at the top view. 
Um, so what's happening, what I can see is that we have a large light and it's casting and it's, it's not making many hard shadows, right? They're pretty soft, they're somewhat transparent, uh, and they're not hard shadows. And the reason why that's happening is because this light is actually so big that it's, its light rays are penetrating inside of where the shadow would normally be cast, right? So what happens is as we move that away, Let's see what happens when we move away. Now we're not gonna change the size of this light. The size of this light is gonna stay the same. So let's take this light and let's actually move it back. Okay, so I'm gonna move it back in space. You'll see what's happening over here is our shadow actually got tighter, right? It's gotten tighter, but it still has fall off. And that's because it's far, but it's not as far, right? It's not like crazy far away. It's not like the sun far away. Um, so it's still able to maintain some of those uh, soft shadows. Um, now I did increase the intensity of this as it moves back because um, as something, yeah, the light has fall off and right as, as it moves back, it's not going to be as powerful. So uh, through keyframes, I'm just uh, increasing the intensity. Now, if we move it back even a step further, let's see what happens. So I'm gonna move it back a step further and increase the intensity. Now, as I do that, what you see is our shadow now has gotten much, much harder, right? And it would continue to do that uh, the further and further and further away we moved it because essentially the light source is becoming smaller, right? Our light source is becoming smaller. And if you remember that the smaller the light source, the harder the shadows, okay? So that's kind of the takeaway from this is that as this moves back, it's in, in, in reference to this object. I mean, look how small that this object has gotten as it moves back. Um, it's gotten smaller in reference, right? Because, uh, yeah, if we, if we come back all the way to our initial position, you'll see just how big that this, um, yeah, this owl is now um, and how big the light is now, like in comparison. So it's all about the size, right? Size matters, I guess. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of the distance, right? Just basically as it goes further back, it gets smaller. When the light's smaller, shadows get harder. Okay, so what about actual size of the light though, right? So what happens when the actual size of the light changes? Like what if, what if, I, want, what if I want to keep this position and um, I want it to be uh, just smaller, right? So let's just see what happens to these shadows as I go forward. Now you see I'm in the same position here um, as I was before. I just made it smaller. And what happens between these shadows is we have a very large shadow that's happening here and then we get a much more defined shadow when we make it smaller. I mean, this light's pretty teeny. Now I did increase, um, I did increase the intensity as this happened because once again, this light is small now and it needs to be more powerful, okay? Um, so that's another way that size can affect the look of the shadow, right? It's not always with distance, it's the actual size of the, of the object. Um, so let's, go to our third variable, which is position, right? So position also affects this. So let's just move, right now we have a shadow that's casting really long across here, right? What happens if we move this light to the top, okay? So if we move it to the top, what happens is you're seeing that we're just getting a very small shadow that's happening here. And the reason why that is, let me go to a front view. The reason why that is, is that we actually are, in, in, in reference to the ground plane, I guess you could say, where the light is actually casting, it's not that much, right? Like we have maybe like here or something, and I think we can even kind of see it over here, that's what's happening. So what's actually clipping the light is not that much. It's, it's pretty minimal. So therefore we get a much smaller uh, shadow, yeah. Um, so having said that, so you could probably guess it, if we wanted to make it longer, well, we kind of all know this, it's what the sun does. So if we wanna make it longer, let's move this light over to the side. Now, as we move it over to the side, you're gonna see that as expected, the shadow gets much longer. And this goes back to the same concept before of, well, all right, something is in the way of the light. <laughs> How much in the way of the light is it? So we have, something like this to something like this. Now, if you put that in reference to the ground plane, that's a lot, right? Like what it's actually blocking over here, that's quite a bit. Therefore, it's actually going to, yeah, create longer shadows because it's blocking more. 
um, whereas above, it's not blocking as much. So that's how um, that's how your shadow shape can be affected also by the position of the light. Uh, and it's all relative to the object, the size of the object, the quality of the objects, but at a base level, um, yeah, the position of the light, basically the lower it is, the longer the showers, shadows, and the higher it is, uh, the shorter are shadows. And again, just think of it like the sun, you know, it's not rocket science. All right, so the next part is gonna be about, well, how does the, the quality of the shadow affect the definition of um, your subject or your object or whatever it is? Uh, so I'm gonna switch over to another project here. Um, and what I have here is the same setup, but I have, let me just lock this camera because uh, I have a feeling it's gonna wanna switch. So what I have here is, um, Same setup, and I just have an area light, same area light, same size, same everything, and it's just hidden it from the front, right? Um, so this area light's hidden it from the front, but you'll notice kind of what's happening is it's it's very flat feeling. It's super flat, um, and it just doesn't have much definition. And this is where it kind of all accumulates together, right? This is when you as an artist have to make these decisions about what we've learned about how to treat this light to get the look that you want, right? Like, what do you want to feature on this this statue, on this owl? What parts of this owl do you want to feature? What's important to you? Well, let's just try swinging the light around and see what happens. So if we swing the light around, you can see instantly that we're getting some more definition. And these all go back to the core values of what we learned in lesson one and two, which is, well, the size of the light, the quality of the light, where it's positioned, what this is blocking, and then of course, what the quality of this object is, which we're not gonna worry about for now, um, but like what is being obstructed, okay? So from this, if I go to a, I guess this is maybe the best view I can get, but if I go to this, I mean roughly we're obstructing the right side of the owl. I guess if we wanted to be, put it in simple terms, the right side of the owl is being obstructed, therefore his beak and his wings or her wings are what are, causing the obstruction and the shape to actually happen. We're creating these shadows because we have actually geometry that is blocking it, right? And that is creating the shape, just like everything in life. Um, yeah, and so like, and this is a look, right? This is one look, right? It's it's lit from a side, it gives you mood, it gives you emotion. What happens if we try another look? You know, if we go, this is, in my opinion, a little, you know, you're looking at something different, right? You're, um, now my eyes are more focused on the top of his head or her head, and um, I see that we're accentuating different parts, right? If we went if we went before, you know, you couldn't see much of the face detail, right? I'm more concerned about his wing and stuff, um, but if I come here, all of a sudden, kind of almost, it takes on like a different life almost, and it's all based on where we choose to put that light and how those shadows fall off will help direct your eye of, of where to land, right? Um, so yeah, so let's let's come over and let's go one more. Now, let's swing the light. Let me go to a top view so you can see what I did. So I just swung, so we were here, and then let's swing the light just like over to here. So basically like another three quarter or something. So here, you know, it's kind of three quarter, but it's feeling pretty flat to me. You know, I, I, I know that this model has a little more detail in it, and I'd like to extrude that. Well, this is where, um, if you remember, larger lights create softer shadows. So I like this angle, I want it to be lit like this, I want the light to be coming from this direction, and I like this heroism that it's creating, but I want there to be more detail. So what you can do, what I would do, is I would make this light smaller. So if we come and we actually take down the size of the light, let's take down the size of the light and increase the intensity, now we've all of a sudden carved out more definition in this statue and we're able to see a lot more than we were here right it's feeling like quite flat and then if we go to here though we're getting a lot more definition and all i did was i just took the light and i just shrunk it right i just shrunk it and i increased the intensity because once again it's it's less powerful of a source when it shrinks um so this is where yes uh, uh harder shadows created by a smaller light can create more definition. And it's important to understand that because when you're making decisions about how you want to light something and how you want something to look, what you want to be focused or featured, 
These are all things that will make your job a lot faster and you'll be able to do things that you wanna do because you know how to do them. So I hope this was helpful and I hope it helps your lighting and I hope it gives you something to think about and just practice and try, move lights around and see how they're affected in different ways. And I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.